everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video we're going to begin a new series of videos in a unit titled Reasoning and Proofs. And this video and actually the first couple of videos are just really going to lay the foundation uh, or, or the framework for what we need to build up to writing uh, geometric proofs. This first section is called Conditional Statements and so let's begin right there with a, just a definition of what is a conditional statement. So a conditional statement is a logical statement that has two parts. It's going to have a hypothesis. And for the purposes of shorthand, we're going to call the hypothesis P. And it's also going to have a conclusion. And we'll call the conclusion Q. Okay, so that P and Q uh, labeling is going to be used pretty often uh, within this section and just maybe the first couple of videos in this playlist. So when written in if-then form, the if part contains the hypothesis and the then part is going to contain the conclusion. So in shorthand, we're writing this in the form if P, then Q. Okay, this first example asks us to rewrite the conditional in if-then form. So we have a conditional statement here. Uh, it says all members of the soccer team have practice today. Uh, the issue with this is it is not written in this if then form. And so we wanna rewrite this in if then form. So I might say, if somebody is a member of the soccer team, then they will have practice today. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so again, if someone is a member of the soccer team, then they have practice today. So you can see the same information is there in this conditional statement. Uh, members of the soccer team, we have that. They're gonna have practice today, we've got that. We've just split it up. We've got this if then form where we've got the hypothesis, someone is a member of the soccer team, followed by the conclusion that they are gonna have practice today. Next, we're gonna build up to what we call some related conditionals. And the first thing that we need in order to, to build up into these related conditional statements is the idea of negation. Uh, now, in logic, negation is simply just the opposite of the original statement. And as far as notation goes, symbolically, you might see this expressed like that. If I saw that, this is going to mean not P, just that symbol right there. Uh, so the negation is again, it's just the opposite and we're gonna do a couple example problems of writing the opposite. All right, the directions on this slide are to write the negation of the statement. Uh, so the first statement is that the ball is blue. If I wanna write the negation of this statement, uh, generally it in writing the negation we're going to include the word not, okay? We're just gonna add that in, okay? So if the ball is blue, the opposite of that is the ball is not blue. What we don't wanna do is try and write the opposite by like changing the color. I hear that sometimes. Somebody's gonna to wanna to say, uh, well, the opposite of the ball is blue is to say the ball is red, and that's not true. Um, we wanna do this by just simply including the word not. Now sometimes, and then this, this next statement illustrates this, is that the word not has already been included. So if I wanna write the opposite of the dog is not white, I'm simply going to write the dog is white. So in this case, I've taken the word not out of the statement, and so it's simply a matter of uh, including or excluding the word not, and we can very simply state the opposite or negation of our statement. Okay, next I wanna talk about our related conditionals. And to do this, we're starting under the assumption um, that we have our if P then Q. So uh, let's just write this at the top. We're starting with, okay, if P then Q, which could be written in symbols like that. Okay, so this is the shorthand uh, symbolic notation for if P then Q, which is P, 
the arrow, and then Q. So I'm going to do some of this shorthand notation as I write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Uh, so let's begin with the converse. The converse, to write the converse, you simply will switch the hypothesis and conclusion. So instead of writing if P then Q, you're going to write if Q then P. Okay? Uh, so that's the first related conditional. It is called the converse. The next related conditional is the inverse. And when you're writing the inverse, you are going to negate or state the opposite of the hypothesis and conclusion. So you're not going to switch them like up here. You're going to keep them in the exact same order as the original, but you're just going to make them both the opposite. So symbolically, that looks like this. If not P, then not Q. Okay, the last one is going to be called the contrapositive. And in the contrapositive, you are going to... So you're going to switch the hypothesis and conclusion statements, and you're also going to negate them both. So you can think of the contrapositive as like a blending of the converse and the inverse. So symbolically, it's going to look like this. If not Q, then not P, okay? So those are our four conditional statements. We've got the original, if P then Q, and the converse, if Q then P. We have the inverse, if not P, then not Q. And we have the contrapositive, if not Q, then not P. All right, let's do a little bit of practice writing all four of those conditional statements. All right, to get this problem started, the example says to let P be the statement, you are a guitar player, and let Q be the statement, you are a musician. We're going to write each statement and then determine if the statement that we wrote is true or false. Okay, the first statement we're going to write is our conditional statement. And the conditional statement, again, is just simply going to take the form if P then Q. Okay, so we're going to write that statement using guitar player and musician up here. So here's what that would look like. Okay, so I wrote the statement, if you are a guitar player, then you are a musician. So now the question is, is that a true statement or is that a false statement? Well, I would say that that is certainly a true statement. If you are playing any musical instrument, then I'm going to say that you fall, probably fall under the category of musician. Okay, next we're going to write the converse. And the converse statement, we are going to take the Q and the P, our hypothesis and conclusion, and we're going to switch them. So now we're going to write if Q, then P. So that's going to look like this. Okay, so switching the P and the Q, I've now written the statement, if you are a musician, then you are a guitar player. And the question again is, is that a true or a false statement? Uh, well, it might be true. It might be true that you're a musician and you also play guitar. However, it's not always going to be true. I could be a piano player and still be a musician. So I can't say that this converse statement is going to necessarily be true all the time. All right, for our next statement, we want to write the inverse. And recall that the inverse is when we negate both hypothesis and conclusion. So I'm going to write if not P, then not Q. 
Q. Not going to do any switching of the P and the Q. I'm going to keep them in the same order as the original. I'm just going to make them both opposites. So I might write this statement. Okay, so I have, if you are not a guitar player, then you are not a musician. Okay, so now the question is, is that a true statement or a false statement? I would make the argument that that is a false statement, okay? If you are not a guitar player, you might still be a musician because maybe you play another instrument. So that's gotta be a false statement as it's not always going to be true. All right, finally, let's write the contrapositive. The contrapositive, again, is going to switch the P and the Q, and it's also going to negate both statements. So I'm going to write, if not Q, then not P. And so writing that out with my statements is going to look like this. If you are not a musician, then you are not a guitar player. Okay, is that true or false? Well, I'm gonna say that's true. If you're not a musician, then that means you don't play anything. So if you're not a musician, you're definitely not a guitar player. So I'm gonna call that a true statement. Okay, this next example problem is just like the previous one in that I'm going to ask you to write the conditional statement, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. And you're going to determine if those are true statements or false statements. Um, and I think it would be a good idea just to practice if you go ahead and hit pause on the video and try and write all four statements without my help. And then when you've written the statements and you've determined true or false, then press play and watch it play out. And I'll go ahead and speed up the playback as well of the video um, so you don't have to watch me write uh, very slow along the way. So go ahead and hit pause, give these four statements uh, a chance on your own, and then when you're ready, hit play and check your answers. Okay, there's my first two answers for the conditional and the converse. Next up, let's show you the inverse and contrapositive. Okay, there are my two statements for the inverse and the contrapositive. Okay, the final thing we're going to talk about in this video is a biconditional statement. A biconditional statement is one that can replace the conditional and the converse when both the conditional and the converse statements are true statements. Okay, so you can write this, I'm going to underline this, when both the conditional and its converse are true. And when that's the case, you can replace the if then with if and only if. So when you read something and you read this if and only if, then you can imply then that the conditional and its converse are both true statements. Let's see an example of that. All right, our final example of the video uh, to explore this biconditional statement We've got the example that uh, we're going to let P be that two lines intersect to form a right angle and Q be the statement they are perpendicular lines. So we're asked to write the following. We're going to write the conditional, the converse, and then this biconditional statement. So I'm going to begin with the conditional. All right, the statement is if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular lines. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a true statement. Okay, next let's take a look at the converse.
All right, the converse statement reads, if two lines are perpendicular lines, then they intersect to form a right angle. And again, that is a true statement, okay? So because both the conditional and the converse statements are true statements, we are allowed to combine those two statements into one biconditional statement. And the biconditional statement might look something like this. Okay, so I have the statement, two lines intersect to form a right angle if and only if they are perpendicular lines. So you can see how I've combined these two statements. Uh, with my biconditional, I still led with my original hypothesis uh, and I kept the conclusion at the end of the statement. But we've just kind of merged these two ideas, these two statements that were both true statements We've just been able to kind of merge or blend them into a single statement and preserve the meaning, the validity of both statements in the process. All right, that concludes our video on conditional statements. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any comments or questions, I encourage and invite you to leave them in the comments section below. Um, if you found this video helpful, please support the channel by giving it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.